couldn't do that in those days. I said, Sandy, couldn't do that now. Fuck's sake, Sandy. We're going to end up in jail. Actually, no, you're not. I am. <laughs> Stone is a trip. And when you're on a bike, I mean a big bike, you've got all power, man. Stone. Yep, as the press blurb said, it's a trip. It's the movie for motorcyclists of an age. You remember where you saw it first. It defined you. Stone was written, directed and produced by Sandy Harbert, who left us in November of 2020. He's loved in this community. So to one of the great man, all roads led to the Dubbo Westview drive-in for a memorial ride in his name. There was a special screening of the movie on the big drive-in screen, music, food and lots of grog. Okay, it might be staged and a little cheesy, but the bikes and riding were first class. And Sydney in a movie about us? Yep, we embraced the whole damn thing. Of course, Infomoto had to be part of it. Rixie? Good luck. Good luck. You're on camera now. Now, I know you're new to this game. Will you be all right? Just treat me gentle. Right, we'll, we'll take you in slowly. And Rixy, Brian Rix, clearly, uh, you know, you used to be on the on the on the dark side, but now you're on the good side. Uh, for, uh, Stone Run, Stone Run. Looking forward to it. I've always wanted to do. When I first saw Stone, I was at the Mildura Drive-In, went in there with a couple of mates with a bottle of stones. Bottle of stones, yes. And um, a, a sweep my bag and uh, watch off our motorbikes. Info Moto. Hi guys, Info Moto Snaggy here at the Dubbo Drive-In. The Dubbo Drive-In. Who knows who had their first adventure at the Dubbo Drive-In. I'm having to speak loudly because there's a band and we're here for the Sandy Harbour Memorial Ride and Run to uh, to enjoy stone and I mean wasn't stone in all our lives pretty ordinary movie let's be honest bloody ordinary movie but they were talking about motorbikes and no one else was talking about motorbikes so we've grown to love it and I'm having a drink info moto I'm from info moto we are uh, by bike enthusiast website yeah. Um, I've been around the game nowhere near as long as you, but fucking nearly. Yeah. Um, and I just wanted to talk to you about, I mean, did you know when Stone, um, you couldn't possibly have known uh, where it was going to go when Stone came out to, to grow to this? Well, we, we had no idea. Yeah. Uh, Sandy said, oh, I'm going to ride a bike and then, you know, I'm riding a part for you. And I said, oh, I'll ride a small part. And I said, how much money have you got? He said, no, I haven't got any. I said, oh, gee. Sound like it's going to happen. Yeah, yeah. And I went away on tour on, with the Arts Council on theatre for two years, came back. And so you were an actor prior? Well, I was a professional theatre actor with Helen Moss oh, okay. on stage, and I, it was actually through Helen that I met Sandy. Right. And so I went on tour of doing Shakespeare for schools and came back, and there was a letter at my house, and it had Kawasaki written on it. And I thought, oh, it's a bloody hand for Kawasaki. And it said, pick up your license and come pick your bike up. And I thought, it's an ad for Kawasaki, and it wasn't. It was a letter from Sandy saying, you know, I've, I've made it. And he managed, to, I think, to, to raise $198,000 the budget for the A lot movie. of money back then? Well, no. It was still, that was a tiny amount of money. Right, OK. Because he paid actors' wages. It's coming a bit closer, darling. I've got you close. The sound will be... I know, I've got you close. And you nearly said fuck wages, all. You can you say fuck all. And, expensive to make a movie yeah, so sure, an ad yeah. would have cost that in that those days yes so he did 
did it cheap as chips and we had to cheat a lot and sneak in and sneak out. We had to stir people up and it's easy to stir the public. But we had to stir the biker community up. Yeah, yeah. And when the I then, I mean, it was a whole different scene. Well, you know, it was Triumphs and WLAs and all the visas and all stuff like that. Stuff. Yeah, yeah. So when we put out that we wanted motorcycles, nobody put up their hands. And Sandy approached Kawasaki and said, Look, give us 10 bikes to use, and I think it was 10 or 16 or whatever it was. I can't count. We've only got 10 fingers. Same here. He said, look, give us X amount of bikes, let us use them, let us paint them, and you're going to have the best ad for Kawasaki ever. And he was right. And we had Dave Hart, who's the legend in himself, yes. you know Dave yes. Hart, yes. Dave Hart paint job. Yes. On my Beamer at home, I've got a Dave Hart paint job, he did the paint. There was a little bit of paint left over, and we thought, well, let's paint the helmets. Yeah. We painted the helmets. We had the fairings, which I actually didn't like, but... Yeah, it sort of, it, it, placed, the, it placed Kawasaki there, didn't it? Look, after we did what we did, the whole planet changed as far as motorcycles, the Japanese, the Hibbsy, yeah. big time. Yeah. We saw fairings everywhere, yeah. painted helmets, yeah. and I was really quite happy because there I was on a 900, brand new bike, and the police were riding on the course, and, yeah, yeah. <laughs> so you had a bit more. That was a fairly impressive. So you were a, the, the odd mix of a Shakespearean actor and a motorcyclist. I'd always been a motorcyclist since I was 14 and 9 months. Yeah. 14 and 9 months, I think, in those days you could hit your L. Yes. Yeah. And in those it days, like that, in those days we didn't pop, bother putting the L's on. We put our girlfriends on the back and just hoped we'd be busted. I did that. I was so, riding on L's for like 10 years because well, it was just you and also, what if was you're the on L's, if you lost your, if you lost your license, there was no license to lose. That's right. If you were on L's, the joke's on you, Colin. But you, you mustn't have got busted. And if you did, it wasn't, you know, serious. So, yes. yeah, no, I, I'd been passionate about motorcycles. Yeah. And I used to go to the theatre on the motorbike, and Sandy had come out and said, oh, look, yeah, yeah. And then one day I had a beautiful 1942 WLA built for John Howard Redford. It was yes. a chopper. Yeah, yeah. And a I'm, Walla. Not, yeah, Walla, but it was a chopper. It was yeah. really, really beautiful. Yeah. And Sandy saw it, he fell in love, and he got his motorbikes, and we started riding around. And then we went club scene and you know and it came out of that it was just yeah it was yeah just terrific. and you've continued to ride since i haven't i haven't given up riding if i if i was not to ride my bike i'd be the biggest ass on the planet yeah yeah i'm sure i'd, I I'd be a really mean. bad rat man i know what you mean it is so you know when they say it's medicinal they're not fucking kidding no that's right i mean you get stressed out about the shit that you fall into you go for a ride and just fast tracks the I mean, everyone that went on that run today came back all like high school kids, you know, full of adrenaline, pumped up. Um, there's nothing like it on the planet. Yeah. I'm sure surfers experience the same yeah. thing. Look, you know I, I, mean? I, I honestly think that anyone that's riding to their, you know, whatever the past time is, experiences what well, we haven't got this on our own. Yeah. But it's that feeling. Yeah. And people that are passionate about what they do, they get that feeling. And I've noticed with, with motorcycles, they're passionate, yeah. they're proud. Yeah. And it doesn't matter what sort of bike you have, what model, as long as you're passionate about that motorcycle and you're proud of that motorcycle, doesn't that's matter. all that matters. Now I've got to ask you, yeah. I've seen Stone, I reckon, oh Christ, not as many times as you have, but I reckon I've seen it half a dozen, if yeah. not more. Yeah. What's your favourite moment in the movie and why? Oh, look at that. Rebecca? I, my missus, my missus was in stone, my missus played oh, Tiger. Oh, is that right? She was a beautiful woman and I saw her last night when we were watching the dog go my she passed away 12 years oh, ago. Oh, uh, We had a wonderful just, life. Oh, goodness me. Wonderful life, kids and grandkids. And my heart leapt and I thought, how, well, there's one product yeah, of that you. relationship. Bless so you. my heart leapt. Yeah. But I have to say, obviously the, the, the funeral run, Yes, because it was so out there yes. and on the edge and truly, truly dangerous. Yes. And like, I mean, anything to happen, was I going to end up in jail? Was yes. I going to end up dead? I mean, when you hung with Sandy, that was that was the reality. Part of the game. I mean, his colours had a real New South Wales police badge. 
You couldn't do that in those days. I said, Sandy, you couldn't do that fuck's, now. fuck's sake, Sandy, we're going to end up in jail. Actually, no, you're not, I am. <laughs> but look, so yeah, the stone drums my favourite, but there's a scene where the crackers are coming to the graveyard. Yes. And all the crackers are coming up this little alleyway and they're sounding like an angry bunch of bees. And that scene in that graveyard, that scene of the, the crackers riding up was so powerful. And no one's noticed this. I'm sure no one's noticed what I'm going to say. A, give me an insight too. But if you watch Sandy Harbour as we're slowing down to a stop, we watched, used to watch the Cowboys in the movies and we've got heroes, yes. and Bert Lancaster and guys like that. Yes. And they drive the horse up and they throw the leg over and they jump off the bike. Yes. He did that on the bike. He kicked the side stand just in time, threw the leg over, jumped, jumped off like the Cowboys here hero is used to do in the movie. And you don't see because it's really quick yeah. unless you know to look for it. So where am I looking exactly when? Because I'm going to watch tonight when, for that. Unless it's been cut. Well, you know what I mean. Take your chance. When the, the grave diggers are arriving at the cemetery and they're all in a big pack going wrong. And it's just as it's come to the stop, he throws his leg over and hops off the bike. So we'll look for that tonight, all right? But all, all the scenes, all uh, the look, scenes. I can't believe, like... I can't believe it. I can't believe it either. Like, yeah, it's just... Yeah. The thing about Stone for me is that finally someone was talking about what we did here in Australia. For once. And look, I have to say something. For us, we were all artists. Yes. We'd all worked together for quite a long time, very, yes. very closely in different, difficult circumstances, so we knew each other. And I, I have to say that we did it out of the passion for what we love to do, yes. and that's create stuff. And, what, and 50, motorcycles. 50, 50 years later or whatever. And motorcycles. and motorcycles. So we didn't do it to become millionaires or great stars. We did it because this is what we fucking love to do. Yeah. And I think that honesty is what came over. And I think people picked up on that yes. honesty and it became part of the culture. Yes. And I think they still do. And look, it became the symbol for motorcycling in Australia, which I'm more than proud yeah, of. Stone, it, Stone is the Australian motorcycle movie. It didn't end with us, it's going over generations. Yeah. People get inducted into Stone. We'll be old and dead and I'll so, still be watching well, it. Well, look, that's why I say. Sandy's gonna live forever. Yeah. He's been a more lies on celluloid, yeah. as we, have we all. Yeah. So look, I, I was very lucky and privileged to be part of that. Well, it's, and, it's uh, very obvious to me that you still feel it. Like it's still there. It hasn't changed. It hasn't changed. When I see my compatriots, it's like time doesn't exist and stuff. I haven't seen Helen for many years when we went down to Melbourne. It's like. I saw her yesterday, yeah. you know what I mean? Yeah. So time doesn't mean anything. Yeah. All this stuff doesn't mean anything. Yeah. It's about that pride and that passion into what we love doing, and that's motorcycling. That's fantastic. Thanks, son. I totally get it. My name's Greg. Yeah. So pleased to meet you. And your son? My son, John Zap. Good day, John Zap. Um, John Zap. So about four days before Sandy passed away, I contacted him and said, hey, there's a dude that owns Dubbo Drive-In, wants to do a screening of stone. And Sandy said, what a bloody great idea. Let's do it. Look, I'm doing something tonight. I'm busy tonight. I'll get onto it tomorrow. Anyway, there wasn't any tomorrow. He was ill the next day and on the Friday, he went to hospital on the Saturday night, he passed away. So we thought, why not? Why don't we go ahead and fulfil what he wanted to do and to have it as a memorial? It's almost 50 years old and it may not have won any Oscars, but Stone is part of the Aussie motorcycle landscape and it deserves utmost respect for that alone. The Sandy Harbour Memorial could well become an annual event, so bring on 2022. But all things come to an end and it's time for Snaggy to hit the long road back to Melbourne.